Hey guys, what's up, what's up, what's up? So this video is a little unique. I am sharing some behind the scenes of Freedom Fest. The festival was awesome. The people that threw it was awesome. The Fledge, it was their first annual event. The organizers, them contacting, them following up. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So there's no complaints about them, honey. But I wanna talk about myself, which kind of sounds egocentric. So I thought about doing this video like a thousand different times, but then I thought, hello, one of the things I hate about social media is that we showcase our highlight reels without our real life. So this is just an opportunity to give you the real behind the scenes, real life. Okay, where do we begin? First off, let me tell you how I got asked to be a part of that event. Super excited for referrals if you ever have poetry events and you want your girl to show up, would love to be there. And so I got asked to write a piece for Freedom Fest. I was super excited, somewhat nervous. I hadn't been on a live stage performing for people since February. So I felt super rusty and this was a custom piece. So I wanna give you some behind the scenes on how this piece, is, this piece was written. There were three pieces performed. I'll go through all three of the pieces, but then most importantly, I'll also give you some behind the scenes, self-talk, self-doubt, so you can get insight into my brain in hopes that you can feel related to. This will help me feel less bad that I did a poetry piece in a crop top. You'll hear that at the end. Okay, so number one, how this piece was written. For Freedom Fest, the first thing I did was I sat with myself and I was like, what is freedom? What is freedom? So I had a sheet of paper and I started writing kind of some concepts, some ideas about what freedom was. But as I started to do that, I started thinking more about what freedom was not. So there's a line in the poetry piece where I honestly refer to something that I'm super passionate about is um, I just don't like what's happening at borders. I don't like what's happening to um, illegal immigrants talk about like children in cages is not freedom i also have not really liked knowing that human lives have been taken by gun violence and then also of course by police brutality um that just lives are taken in general i don't like that lives are taken by gang violence i don't like that lives are taken by people fighting people by road rage i just don't like that and so i thought about what freedom is not and so started writing about that a little bit um, so those are some of my first steps, but then I also asked many people in my circle who have very different backgrounds, very different stories. What is freedom to you? What is freedom to you? What is freedom to you? Wrote all those things down. So then I just had like a pool of information to pick from as I discern, um, what freedom is to me and what freedom can mean in general. I knew my goal. So something to think about when we're writing pieces is what is the goal to get to? And so I knew my goal was something along the world, the lines of world peace and something along the lines of freedom of the mind and freedom comes as an individual. So I knew where I was going. I had a pool of information and then I started my writing process and wrote um, the poetry piece that I ended up presenting at Freedom Fest. So I write this piece, I'm super excited. I have my girls, my glam squad, so let's talk about self-doubt, okay? I got my girls, I haven't been in a while. I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. So we're all getting ready. And we have this great idea, like this is about freedom, I should be free. Yes, I should wear an outfit that's a little like riskier, like something I've wanted to do, but I'm too afraid to do. But you know what, I am free in the mind myself. I'm an individual. I, the first line of the piece was, freedom to me is no. And then I talked about like saying no to limiting beliefs, saying no to this, saying no to that. And so I was like, I'm gonna say no to insecurity, right? So I rock this like cute little croppity top top, right? But what people don't know is I was supposed to rock a suit jacket. I had my express suit jacket with it. This and this is cute. This and this is cute. It's trendy, look at honey, it's classy. It's like showing a little bit of skin, but you're covered up and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're in. You're not exposed. You're in and you're showing a little bit of skin and it's risky, but I feel free and it's trendy and it's something I wanted to do, but I've been too afraid of, but I got my girl squad with me and then I get to the event. When I get to the event, my friends, 
that I was positive it was indoor. Matter of fact, I didn't even picture it being outdoor. I pictured it inside. I was wrong. We show up. I'm in my suit jacket in 90 degree weather. I'm not even exaggerating. Look it up. Look up what the weather was. In 90 degree weather with my suit jacket and my crop top and my jeans and my black heels. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do this. I'm already sweating. I can already feel my pits ruining my jacket, right? So I look at my friend, I'm like, I can't do this. And, and I just, I was like, I'm gonna walk around and do poetry in a crop top. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Let me bring it back. Let me bring it back. Let me bring it back. So we're at crop top on stage. Let me just tell you guys the self doubt that's going in my brain and in my mind throughout this entire event, right? I'm feeling insecure. I'm feeling like, am I gonna look fat on the stage? I'm feeling like, dude, is this in alignment with my brand and with my image? And it's just interesting, right? The very thing I'm writing about is about being free and saying no. Saying no to judgment, saying no to the haters, just saying no. But here I am having to preach to my own self because I'm becoming self-conscious in my own right, in my own mind. So literally I sit in this chair and I'm seeing amazing artists and I'm like, Lex, get over yourself. Don't be writing about freedom like unless you're gonna live it out, be free. Be free yourself. And so I had to remember like, what is my purpose in being here? My purpose is to inspire, motivate, encourage people to be free and to pursue their dreams. Like that's a part of like my life mission and to help people just become free in their identity and, and heal in their pain. And like, like that's why I do a lot of the things I do to help people reach their dreams. Honestly, I don't know, it's my, it's my calling, it's what I feel passionate about. And so here I was in this moment, my first time doing poetry in, in months and self, battling self-doubt and having to take, like overcome my own little hurdle before I could even be of service to other people. And so um, I sat down and I was like, you know what, in addition to, they had asked if I wanted to do more than one piece. And I was like, in addition to doing my freedom piece, in my crop top for the first time. I'm also gonna do a piece about the process I've had to do, I have had to overcome. So let's talk about the second piece, which is called Rose Gold Glasses. Um, but I talk about how I navigated through hurt and how when hurt happens, you almost have this lens that you walk through life. So it's a metaphor. When you're walking through life with that lens, um, things that were once white are pink. Now that message really actually came from a sermon a few years ago, but then um, it's also an analogy I just use often when I notice that people kind of aren't seeing things clearly because of pain, but things, I'm, I'm in a, like, I wrote that piece because I wasn't seeing things clearly because of my own pain. So, um, but by the end of the piece, there's a resolution. And so I decided to share that piece vulnerably, which was so terrifying and so scary. It was the first time I had shared that piece ever in a public setting. And um, truthfully, I'm thinking about making you all a creative video about it, so be on the lookout for that. Um, but so vulnerable. And even as I was doing it, I could feel myself though becoming more free and people were sharing like, like rewind and just in it. And I'm so grateful I did do it because at the end there was somebody in particular who I respect who was like, thank you so much for sharing that piece. It's what I needed to hear. And those comments are why you do what you do. At least for me, I do it for the one. You don't, I mean, I, you can do it for the thousands, but you do it for the one because if it impacts one person's heart, then it's worth it. Um, and that'll help you overcome that doubt as an artist behind the scenes when you're kind of freaking out. So, having that one person say thank you made any struggle, any insecurity worth it. So I probably should have said that at the end of the video, but oh well, this already isn't perfect. Um, so that was a behind the scenes on the first and the second. The third behind the scenes is, it's a piece I wrote years ago um, before we did Below the Stacks as a business. I was very nervous about taking on such a huge project. I wrote this piece, there was a day I just sat at my favorite coffee shop at the time 
um, but the coffee shop no longer exists. But at the time, uh, Espresso Royale, and I just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And kept thinking about Peter in the Bible taking, of all the disciples, right? They're all on the boat. Peter says, if it's you, like call me out to walk. And I think a lot of my journey in life has been, hey God, if it's you, give me some type of sign, I should walk. And then I just kind of walk. I walk out on water, I walk in faith and hope that all the other puzzle pieces come together, um, which is very scary, very um, growing. It grows you, it builds you up in faith and trust in something greater than you. So I wrote the piece then, but we have been working on a poetry album for it um, for a long time, actually, like, shout out to Wise. He edited music for it years ago, but I think I've been such a perfectionist that I haven't released it to the public. And so the reason why I decided to do that piece while there <clears throat> was because I needed to even have enough confidence and reminder that that album is coming out. And so teasing it in public, hey guys, I'm working on a poetry album right now. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of this piece. Saying that and doing that was a reminder to myself, like, no, you are doing this and it isn't a come into fruition. And you have been saying you're working on it for a while, but like you just said it in front of another body of people and I have camera people there. And so it's getting recorded. And so it's like, hey, there's accountability. You are releasing something. It's going to be excellent. And um, accountability. Now, I don't recommend saying all these things on the internet so that people can keep you accountable. But for me in that moment, it felt right as I'm pursuing freedom in multiple ways, right? And so I share all the behind the scenes. Yes, to explain the crop top for all the people that will talk trash. But, <laughs> and because of my own insecurities. But um, I share the behind the scenes because I think sometimes we see people's highlight reels instead of like the real life. And some of my favorite things about artists or um, people I respect artists I respect as they share their work. I love seeing the behind the scenes and getting the behind the scenes story. And so this is my behind the scenes of Freedom Fest. Also want to mention that every single person that helped organize and plan it was extremely kind, super professional. I mean, they contacted me. They were asking me how much time I needed. They were following up, um, super organized. And I was super appreciative of just their kindness. The MC, you were amazing. And yeah, it was just a good, good vibes, good vibes, good vibes. And it was awesome to just see people and thank you for throwing the first ever Freedom Fest. I love the concept and then love that I was able to be a part. So lessons I hope you take away. Sometimes you have to apply what you're speaking to other people out there and you have to overcome your own battles of the mind. Yeah, that's one. But then two, sometimes life throws you curveballs, but it's actually an opportunity for you to take a step up. Because if I didn't have those curveballs, I wouldn't have had to face that, hey, I think I battle some body insecurity, but I'm about to do this anyway. Or, hey, I think I'm showing a lot of vulnerability, but I wanna be free and I hope it frees other people. And then the lesson, it's worth it. And then like the last piece, like be free. So <laughs> that's the behind the scenes. If you haven't seen the video of um, the performance from Freedom Fest, I encourage you to check it out. It's titled Lansing. Freedom Fest, and then the date, I think. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you ever have any behind the scenes questions, just put them on the comments below and who knows, maybe I'll make you a video about it. Okay guys, toodles, have an awesome day. Keep writing, keep slaying, keep doing your thing. Wait, 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 I have one more thought. Why has no one ever said this shameless plugs are super awkward. I published my first ever self-published book during COVID, but I did have a team behind me. Shout out to Marley who helped, anybody who edited it, Jacob Weston who did the illustrations. So we published our first ever book, but 
<laughs> nobody said it would be kind of awkward being like this is my first book yeah that was awkward but i'm so glad i did it because thank you to the host like she bought a copy and then i brought a copy that i always want to give to somebody who's speaking to me or i see a lot of talent in or who's young and so i got to give one of those copies to a youngin who was just inspiring me she was playing the piano she was playing the drums i was like who are you miss talented thing this book is for you and signed a copy for her um but all of that is to say somebody should have made a video about how awkward it is to do shameless plugs and pray for me that your girl gets better at promoting her books i don't know it was awkward, but also super exciting to promote my book. Okay, that was the only last reflection I realized that I didn't do. And so I need to throw it in there because somebody's going to relate to that. And if you can relate, comment below and we can have a whole conversation or Instagram live about it. I don't know. 